too in his time. The other one, his rival, I'm going to mention later, is called Glacier. Glacier was also a good mathematician, but not as good as McMahon. He was a, a little bit, a few notches behind McMahon as a mathematician. But he was probably a little bit better as a computer. He, was, he computed gamma to 30 day digits uh, in the annals of computing. So he was very, very famous. In those days, you can publish a paper if you have gamma or pi, uh, not, uh, even pi, pi to 700 uh, digits, it was a paper. Uh, 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 Adams, yeah, another computer was Adams, the discoverer of the planet uh, Neptune. Uh, his famous astronomer. And the reason, the way he discovered Neptune, he did lots of computations. Uh, with his squares, uh, the method of Gauss, he, had, he didn't have a computer. So he was a uh, computer with, uh, but this kind of computer in his head. Uh, and that's probably how he discovered Neptune. But later on, he used his computational skill also to compute gamma and other constants to make decimal digits. So I think Adams, Glacier, and McMahon were the top three computers of the era. Possibly there were other people. And there were also good <laughs> mathematicians. <laughs> there were also professional computers, idiot savants, who only did computing, but they didn't know any mathematics. They only uh, were good. Uh, but this is. Anyway, the approach of McMahon for this was to introduce a beautiful operation the Omega operation. It looks very natural. So he did what happened, he did. Calculations. So let's illustrate it with a very simple case. But you only had ones and twos. So let's just take attention to the special case. Yeah. I'm using this article, uh, these articles of uh, Peter Paulet and George Andrews. Very, very nice article. It's called McMahon's Dream. Yeah. So two, two. So that's an example. So only using two parts. One. Okay. If you only use one part, it's trivial. If you, you do ten, ten partitions, they can only use one and not one and two. And why is it trivial? Or not trivial, but why is it well known? It's the same. Right. That's the, that's the so-called for right diagram. It plays the one by dot. It's exactly partitions. So, play partitions where you only have one uh, is goes back to Euler. So, he wanted the next thing. He wanted to build up. First, you can use one and twos, then one, twos, and threes, and so on. Uh, so, yeah, I did as follows. You look at all, so, so let there be a. Uh, I think, yeah. Then it be n one here, n one two in this row, and n two and m one I think is m two. Something like this. I, I don't know uh, exactly the details. Anyway, it all goes down to computing the following uh, generating function. X nowadays we use Q, but McMahon used X, so let's use X. To the M1. So it goes down, and I'm not sure exactly how. But it's said in the paper. And then the summation of all non negative integers. <coughs> but now you have some conditions. N1 has to be bigger to N2. Or maybe this. Sorry, sorry this is probably N2. And that's probably here. And this one here. Yeah. yeah, that's like this. And yeah, okay, yeah, like this. N1, 2, and this, so it's 2, yeah. You, so it's very, very special time of playing partitions. You only use 1s and 2s, and there are only 2 rows. Uh, 2 columns, sorry, 2 columns. So you have 2 and 1s, and 1 and uh, in the first row, and 1 and 1s, followed by 1 and 1s. So if you don't want to break the rules, uh, N1 has to be bigger to N2, and uh, N1 plus N1 is to be bigger. So that's very awkward. So McMahon's brilliant idea was to introduce dummy variables. Have another variable, t1 and t2. And m1 and 
n1 and t2 and m1 minus n2 minus n2. And the analysis! And they say, this is geometric series. This you can sum up and get a geometric series. <coughs> but this negative, also with a uh, negative powers of t1, but nevertheless, if you consider it as a form of power series in x, it's, you can get, you can sum it exactly. But then, he said, do it, and then you have a, a, a Lorentz series in t, whose coefficients are form of power series in x. And then McMahon said, take this, call it f of xt, and then only keep the positive uh, the positive exponents in the negative exponent of t1 and t2 and set it into one. So two things. First, discard all the negative exponents and after you do this, replace it by one. So there was the omega operator. So you say what you really need. And this is easy to sum. It's just to make a multiple a geometric series. So you have... What's the relationship between t and t1? No, t1 and t2 are just formal variables. Uh, before I raised it, I had two inequalities here. Uh, it was the inequalities in the initial sum was n1 bigger or equal to n2. The two con so the conditions, uh, these are all negative, that's the default, uh, that's the background, and then n1 plus m1. So McMahon's approach was to discard this, and instead of this, introduce two uh, dummy or whatever. Uh, auxiliary uh, variables t1 and t2 and have t1 to the n for each, in, for each inequality here introduce a variable so possibly have more for this uh, and here we have t1 to bar and so for each, for each of these inequalities here introduce a, a, a dummy variable uh, and then you have this so then you, you sum this this is easy to sum even for human you get some rational function in x, t1, and t2, then you can view it as a formal Lorentz series in t, and also negative powers in t, and by the coefficients are all a formal powers in x, it means no negative x, only has positive coefficients by construction. Then the construction is, once you have this, uh, f of x1, x of x, at t1, t2. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. That's my man. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, f of x1, t2, then apply the famous, uh, well, not famous, but nice famous, thanks to uh, John Landos, omega operation with respect to t1 and t2. And this consists in two parts. First, only retain those exponents with non negative uh, things. In other words, throw away, discard all the uh, monomials that have negative. Uh, negative exponents. And also then, after you do this, replace them all by one. And that's exactly what we had before, before we uh, erase this. And then, uh, he tried very hard, and he struggled very much, and he was able to prove this case. And he got the found way back, uh, after a few pages, was able to find an explicit and is that, maybe that's how it was led to a conjecture. But then he went on. What if we have three? Uh, three rows with ones and two. What if we have one, two, and threes? Uh, and three, sorry, three columns and so on. And then very soon he got stuck. But what he did, he had a database. He made some basic he constructed a database uh, for some uh, frequently occurring rational functions. And he was able to go so far, but he was unable to prove his conjecture. After 20 years, he proved it by a completely different method using uh, recurrences. But he was unable uh, to use this. And, but he wrote, he liked it very much, and his classic book, Combinatorial Analysis, about 80 pages I dedicated to this dead end. And then at the end he said, eh, I wish I could, but the computations get so complicated eh, that eh, it has to wait eh, to somebody else.
to do it. And this paper, uh, the paper version, was submitted to the London Mathematical Society, and the referee was no other than his rival computer, Glacier. And he was not a bad guy. He didn't like this paper, but he was lenient, and in the referee report said, uh, yeah, he said, uh, in location, I don't fancy the paper very much, but it must be printed. I don't care much for a paper on very technical mathematics being published in the philosophical transaction. It was philosophical transaction. Uh, unless there is something very striking in it. However, it is one of the series, and they are deep water now, and we cannot go on much further. So it's really that end. I have made my report because there is no more to be said and that it should be published. That is only virtual. It should be published. I don't like this paper. It's not very good, but it's marginal. And it's only redeeming uh, feature is the conjecture. So in this paper, he made this famous conjecture. So does he like the conjecture? I didn't like the method. And indeed, at the time, it was a dead end. Now in the mid-90s, uh, it is still going strong together with the risk Linz group uh, Peter Paula and uh, Axel Ries, they developed about the saga of 15 papers that systematically explore McMahon. So it's a complete revival of the Omega uh, uh, method. McMahon called partition analysis. And he had this. So they implemented, beautifully implemented, the Omega operator in a Mathematica package. And it can do so many things, and they proved. First, they reproved what McMahon did, and they also proved lots of new things. Uh, it's a very powerful thing. So combining, so McMahon got, got resurrected. Uh, his idea, it was a dead end at the time, thanks to John Andrews and his uh, collaborators who are computer wizards. They completely resurrected uh, these things. So it's really, really uh, very impressive what you can do this computer algebra. And George and Andrew was really a pioneer in this. Let me conclude uh, with another unrelated uh, thing. Uh, that how George explained something that Euler did. This was in 1990. This is not directly related to symbolic computation, but it may have been inspired, probably used uh, symbolic computations to come from this. So this is a beautiful example <laughs> that Euler had. You cannot generalize from finitely many cases. We always warn our students not to jump to conclusion. Uh, two is the, uh, three is the prime, five is the prime, seven is the prime. Doesn't mean that all, all integers are prime. You cannot jump to conclusions. So Euler had something, another amazing thing. There is the so-called trinomial coefficients. So you know, if it does this, it's a binomial coefficient, if you expand it. But if you expand this thing, you get the so-called trinomial coefficient. Of course, they go from minus n to n. And when j is zero, it's called the central trinomial coefficient. And Euler, a long time ago, was playing around and you made the following observation. The central trinomial uh, coefficient n plus 1 uh, to 0 uh, on, on 2 is amazingly the product of 2 of a Fibonacci number fn and fn plus 1. And he tested it for n between minus 1 and 7 for 8 special cases. It was, no, 9, right? Yeah, 9. 7, take away minus 1, plus 1. Yeah, 9 special cases. It was 9. So Euler said, wow, it must be 2 for n. But then Euler checked it for n equals 8, and it was off by 1. <laughs> so this was, and he called it uh, the cautionary tale. It was more a pedagogical uh, article. Uh, uh, it was, uh, yeah. Exemplum memorabile inductione fallacies. I don't know Latin, but probably means uh, 
Be careful about incomplete induction. You can't write the conclusion. And here is something, it's true for nine cases. Uh, for nine special cases, and it's not true in general. And nobody was able to explain how come. It was just a curiosity. And then in 1990, George Anders came with the right thing. This is equal to something, and that's only the tip of an iceberg. So George Andrews, in a beautiful total force, very possibly using computer algebra, although I'm not quite sure, I to ask him, found, made it true for every end. So, the George Andrews correction, so he corrected that. He corrected Euler's false identity, and he explained why it worked so well. It J goes from minus infinity to infinity. N plus 1 choose 10 J. It's equivalent to this here. Yeah. Uh, choose, sorry, choose in the temple of uh, uh, central phenomenon. This is the George Anders fixing of this. And notice the 10 J. If J it was zero, you get n plus one to stand. That's equivalent uh, to what I raised. So you have to, that's why it failed uh, after 10 cases. It starts uh, to fail and it's off by one. So it completely fixed it. Now recently I wrote a paper about this. Now for this modified version, Euler would have been right. Uh, using the Zalbergian methodology, if you check it, not for 10, but for 20 cases, uh, it's a completely rigorous proof. So in this case, uh, induction, <coughs> incomplete induction uh, made a comeback uh, in a different context. But this is just a remark. Uh, so George Andrews is really, uh, really, really a great guy. And happy birthday, George. Thank you very much.